Welcome. Today, we're going to discuss similar polygons. So here we have two figures, and these figures are said to be similar. Now, what are some things that we can notice? The first thing that stands out is that there are a lot of congruent angles. By the notation, notice that A and F both have only one arc, so they're said to be congruent. And we can say the same thing about angle B and angle G. They both have two arcs. Angle B is congruent to angle G. C and H are also congruent. D and I are also congruent. E and J are also congruent. If we look to any angle in one figure, we can always match it to a congruent angle of the second figure. Another observation is that both figures seem to be in proportion. Meaning that if we choose one side on the left figure, let's choose BA. If we multiply this side by some number, let's call it a scale, we will get the length on the side on the right hand side figure. And this goes for all the sides in the figures. If we choose BC, we can find some scale number that we can multiply this side to obtain the length of. GH. The same with CD. If we obtain the length of CD, we can find some scale number that we can multiply the length of CD to obtain the length of HI. And we can go around this figure. DE, we can find some number that we can multiply this length to obtain the length of IH. And AI, we can find some number that we can multiply AI times to obtain the length of fj. And if this is all true, then we can say that the sides on both figures are in proportion. And whenever these two characteristics occur, we can say that we have two similar figures. If we're able to match up every angle with a congruent angle, and we can see that the sides are in proportion, we can say that we have similar polygons. That notation that we use to indicate similar polygons is this squiggly line that we have here. Notice that this is a congruent symbol without the equal parts. So now what we can conclude is that figure A, B, C, D, E is similar to figure F, G, H, I, J. The order matters when we're naming similar polygons. Those angles which are congruent need to be in the same location. Angle A was congruent to angle F, so notice that they are both in the first location in our statement. Angle B was congruent to angle G, so notice that they're both on the second location in our statement. Angle C was congruent to angle H, so notice that they are both on the third location in our statements, and so forth. So we have to be careful with how we name our figures. Let's take a look at an example. So here we have the same figures as before. We have said that all sides in similar polygons, they need to be in proportion. Meaning that if we take a look at the length of BA, there must be some number that we can multiply to obtain the length of GF. And this number that we multiply by is something that we refer to as the scale factor, which we're going to define here. Now, how do we define the value of this scale factor? we have to define all the proportions in these two figures. So if we get the length of BA and we divide by the length of GF, that is going to give us a value. But that value is the same as if we were to divide BC by GH. And that is the same number as if we were to divide CD by HI. And that's the same as if we get DE and we divide it by IH. And that's the same as if we get AE and we divide it by FJ. And this is what we define as the proportions of two similar polygons.
When we are defining these proportions, there's one thing that we got to keep in mind. All the line segments in the numerator belong to the same figure, and all line segments in the denominator belong to the same figure. Notice that all these line segments that we have here, they belong to the figure on the left. And notice that all line segments in the denominator, they belong to the figure on the right. Now, if all these fractions are equivalent to each other, then let's choose two sides that we have information on, AE and FH. There must be a proportion of these two sides. Let's define that. We know that AE has a length of 5, and we know that FJ has a length of 15, which we can simplify to one third. And this value that we obtain here is what we define as the scale factor and also the proportion among the figures. What we are saying with this value is if we get the line segment of FG and we multiply times one third, we will obtain the line segment of AE. And this is true for all sides. If we get the line segment of GF and we multiply times one third, we will get the length of BA. If we get the line segment of GH and we multiply times one third, we will obtain the length of BC. If we get the length of HI and we multiply times one third, we will obtain the length of CD and so forward. So what we can say is that these two figures have a scale factor of one third. But notice that we can flip the order of this proportion. We could also find this value by dividing FJ by AE. And here we would get 15 over 5, which is 3. So what is the correct scale factor? Well, both values are scale factors. Because now, if we go the other order, if we get AE and we multiply times 3, we will get 15. If we get BA and we multiply times 3, we will get the length of GF. If we get BC and we multiply times 3, we will get the length of GH. So if we go the other way around, we can say that we have a different scale factor. Here we have a scale factor of 3. So we have to keep in mind the order of our similarity. One way to define this order is to say that within any proportion, the numerators will be the image and the denominators will be the pre-image. Within this blue scale factor, fj was the image, is where we're going towards to, and AE was the pre-image, is where we're coming from. And in the red scale factor, AE was our image, is where we're going towards to, and FJ was the pre-image, is where we're coming from. The red scale factor was from right to left, and the blue scale factor was from left to right. Hello, if you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.